Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our map surface playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In today's lesson we're going to be learning about how to get map elevation data and then applying that elevation data in a custom built web app called Elevate My Run. So the top three methods which we'll be demonstrating today are new elevation sampler, sample location or locations, and finally, sample path. So let's climb on in over to the code and start learning. As you have probably figured out from the title, App Script through the map service allows you to access Google Maps Elevation API, which basically allows you to select any place on the world and then get its elevation above sea level. So let's demonstrate that to date through a web application. So I've gone out and created this web application called Elevate My Run. And basically this is intended for runners who want to map out the run, their intended run that they are about to undertake. So they can specify a starting point and a finish line. So let's say one runner comes into this website right here and let's say that they want to run from Half Dome all the way to El Capitan. So they would again specify their location. It could either be a traditional address, such as with a house number and zip code, or if it's a recognizable name enough, then they can just specify the name of that location, such as El Capitan or Half Dome. So then after they have their starting point and finish line, then they would uh, click on this button right here, C route. And then what that would do is it would present them a map of the route that they are going to run. So this just gives them a better idea of the turns that they will be taking, and then also it will present them with the total distance. But let's say that you're not really that satisfied with the shape of this uh, application as it is, because if you just present them this map and the total distance, then you may be misguiding the runner a little bit, because if the runner were to look, were to look at your map, they might be misguided and think that it is all flatlands, right? They may, they may say, okay, 15.8 miles, that's something that I could do. And then look at the map and say, it looks like there's a lot of turns, but it's basically all flat. And again, that would be terribly inaccurate because this is in the middle of the Rocky Mountain, or this is in the middle of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. So this is very mountainous, and it's not going to be a good representation of the actual run. So let's say that you want to uh, give them elevation data as well to give them just a, to, a better context of the run in which they are going to be undertaking. Well, in order to do that, you need to go back into your app script editor. And we already have a couple functions uh, named out and defined. We have our do get and the include external file. But now let's see what the HTML is that we are returning. So here is the HTML that, that the users will see. We have our head tag and the body tag. We have our navigation bar, and we have this input container that contains the two input fields for starting point and finish line. And then we also have this button right here that says C route. We have our map container, which will hold the map, and then also our chart container, which will eventually hold our elevation chart right here. So here is the CSS in case you were curious. Again, I'm going to be posting all of this code to GitHub if you want to take a deeper dive into it and look at it a little bit more closely. But now here is the client side JavaScript. So from here, this looks like we are setting up an event listener on this button right here. So if we go back into our HTML, we can see that that button is the C route button right here with the same ID. So once this button right here is clicked on, then we are going to run this callback function right here, which is basically just going to be getting the value of the origin field and then also the destination and then storing that in uh, two variables called origin and destination. If either of those are blank or empty, then we're simply going to alert the user to fill out both the starting point and destination. But if they are filled out, then we are going to run this server side function called get map data and then pass in both that origin and destination. Again, this is a way, google.script.run Google is a way to run server side functions in our .gs files. And then if the get map data runs successfully and there are no errors, then we are going to run this callback function display map 
but if there are failures, then we are going to run this function right here. Simply, we are going to be calling or we're going to be canceling the error. All right, so let's go and check out our git map data server side function. So again, that's found in our .gs file right here. So here is git map data. We're going to be accepting again the origin and destination. And the first thing that we are going to be doing is getting the directions. So to do that, again, we've seen this in the previous episode. We are going to be using the, uh, the method new direction finder. We're going to be setting the origin, the destination, and then setting the mode as walking. Again, we don't want, this is a running. So we want to show the route that people can take on footpaths and then getting the directions. We're going to be getting the, the best route from those directions. Again, we've seen all of this in previous episodes. So if any of this looks confusing, be sure to check out the previous episodes of this season, season 14. But now that we have the best route, then we are going to be adding that path on a new static map. And then once we have that map, we're going to be getting the URL and then passing and then returning that URL with an API key to the uh, to back our client side uh, JavaScript right here in the data parameter. All right, so now again, we're just returning the distance and the map, but we want to return elevation now. So how can we do that? Well, first we need to declare a constant, we'll say constant elevation equals, and then we're going to be accessing the parent class maps again. And we've seen new static map and we've seen new direction finder. Now it's time to demonstrate new elevation sampler. So this method right here is, is, is going to return for us an elevation sampler. And there really aren't too many additional methods off of this class right here, elevation sampler. Uh, it's just sample location and sample path. But why would you want to use say sample location versus sample path? Well, sample location, you can give it a specific location or an array of locations, and then sample location will go out and it will get the elevation of those specific locations. With sample path, however, instead of specifying a specific location to get the elevation of, sample path, you give it an actual path, and then what sample path will do is it will take points along that path and get elevation data of points along that path. So in our case, we're going to want to use the sample path method because again, we have a route that we're going to take and we want to get elevation data along that route. But in order to make this uh, comprehensive, I am going to show you what a sample location looks like. In this way, we can also take a look at the location object. So with, uh, we are, again, we are going to be using new elevation sampler and we're going to be sampling the location of Mount Everest. So with sample location, you can only specify a latitude and longitude. Unfortunately, you can't specify an address, but if you get the latitude and longitude and here it is of Mount Everest, then you can pass those two values in and then get the elevation. So let me just run this right now. And if we do, then we see that we have an okay status and then we also have some results and it looks like the elevation of Mount Everest is 8,800 meters. So that's pretty cool. And then we also have a resolution uh, data right here and then also the location which we already knew the latitude and longitude. But this is the data point that we are most interested in which is elevation. So that is sample location. So now let's go and look at sample path. Again, to sample a path, we need to either give it some points, right? Or we can give it an encoded polyline. So we're, we actually have that data in the, in the route object right here. So if we say sample path, and then we say best route dot overview polyline. Again, we've seen this in previous episodes. This is, how, this is uh, some data that you can access off of the directions object. And then we say points, then this is the path that we are going to specify and we are going to sample. But that's not the only thing that we need to, we need to input into sample path. We also need to give it the number of samples, which is the number of points to sample along the path of points. So again, it, how many different elevations along your path or your route do you want to sample? So let's just say 10 for now. Again, this will give us 10 different points equidistance from each other along the route, which we are going to sample in the elevation. All right, so now if we save this, 
actually we need to return that data so we need to return now our elevation so we'll say elevation and then we'll just pass in the elevation constant which we have de defined right here all right we'll save that and then we'll go back into our client side javascript and then uncomment all of this right here all right so again we're going to get the elevation through the data object right here and then we're going to get the results from that and then once we have that elevation results then we are going to be basically getting the x and y uh, coordinates. So we're basically going to be getting the, the y coordinate, which is the amount in feet. Again, we're just taking the meters and then multiplying that by 3.281 to get the feet. And then for x is basically how far along our route we have, we have run. All right, so now if we save that and we go back into our web application and refresh this page, Let's do that same thing. We'll say half dome and then we will say, we'll say El Capitan. And then let's see this route now. So again, we have this map as always, but if we scroll down, now we have the elevation map. So this makes sense. We're starting at half dome, so it's gonna be relatively high. And then as we go down half dome, we are going to be sinking lower towards sea level. And then as we approach El Capitan, we are going to be raising again in elevation. So it looks like the first half of our run is going to be relatively downhill and nice and easy. But then around mile eight, then we are going to be running uphill again towards the summit of El Capitan. So again, that is pretty dang cool. And as you scroll through all of these, you get a uh, point by point data, such as at a mile around 11, it's going to be 6,800 feet high in the air. All right, so again, we don't need to use also 10 points. We can get a little bit more granular and say something like 30. And if we save that and refresh this and run it again, we'll say half dome and we'll say El Capitan. We'll see the route just like we've done before. And then now we have a little bit more granular elevation map. And so we can see a little bit more specific, the elevation at uh, specific points along our journey. So I think that is pretty cool. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned a little bit more about getting elevation and adding it into your own app script projects. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really means a lot to me. And I'll see you in the very next episode.